Welcome everybody to Yoko and Frisky's Dimensional Riff. I'm Yoko, and here is my brother from another mother, MC Metro God Frisky. Happy Mario Week, everybody. I know it's been a minute, but we're back with some crazy Mario entertainment. We got weird fan art fan games, fan theories, and fan fiction. And uh, we're celebrating the release of the Mario movie in a big way, because you're getting a big episode today, and then next time you're going to get our review uncut, uncensored. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be madness. Can you handle it? Do you have it? Do, 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 do you, you have, have it? it? Guts! Da, da. You should have said Mario. You ruined it. <laughs> Damn. This is why this is why nobody takes me to Sesame Place. Anyway. Uh before, before we ahead. get into any of that, all mm-hmm. the stuff. Um, there's a few things I want to talk about. Our last episode was focused on black characters, favorite black characters. We didn't mention Mr. Game and Watch. <laughs> oh my Terrible. god. <laughs> Terrible on all yes. <laughs> To be fair, I saw Mr. Game & Watch cosplayer at the last anime con, and he was so dark. His costume, he, he just had the head, and that's all he needed. Yeah, that's all I was I like, need. you know what? Good on you. That was Good great. on you, man. And uh, one of my favorite fighters, Eddie Gordo from Tekken. Badass. I'm so sorry we didn't mention you in the last episode. Uh, speaking of Tekken, yo, their trailers have been fire. They dropped like four this week. No, five today, cause um, Asuka Kazama. Yeah, Asuka and Leroy came out today. I'm just like, damn. Leroy, Leroy, mm-hmm. <laughs> the Leroy. Game, the game looks great. We're probably not getting it for at least another year, but everything I've seen so far, it just it looks like. A, a blast to play. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Probably not getting it at all unless you're going to save up for a PS5. That is true. <laughs> Maybe. Isn't that cute? Yeah, I'll get one of KB Toys at a discount. Don't worry. Yeah! The warehouse auction discount yeah. where you actually get good toys. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to Everything Everywhere All at Once for sweeping the damn Oscars. Did you know? Oh, thank God. I didn't know. I heard it won some awards, but like, not like this. This is amazing. That movie is literally the most awarded movie of all time. Wow. Can you well, it's it? entertaining and memorable. Yeah. it's it, it, it was my favorite movie from last year. I gave it the Scott Pilgrim Award. Which is for the most overlooked movie, but I, I gotta take it back because the movie's getting its flowers. So I'm retroactively giving that award to Violet Night from last year. Go watch Violet Night and great job to everything, everywhere, all at once. Everybody uh, loved that. It's a great movie. It's fantastic. I'm glad yeah. it's getting so much love. We need more, you know, original movies like this. Um,. Yo, the Scott Pilgrim anime got announced. Did you hear about this? Yep, I sure did. With the full I, cast I hope from it's... the movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, they got everybody from the movie. They got to do the voices. It's going to be great. I'm I'm stoked. I hope it's not like a retelling of the movie movie, but closer to the comics, you know? Oh, yeah, it's definitely... um. Uh, each comic should definitely get at least like an hour episode. I have it be like mm-hmm. a six hour epic because there's a lot they left from the comics, and hopefully, they could fill in the blanks now. We get yeah, more screen too. time with uh, these cast members, absolutely. Man, they even got absolutely. Brie Larson, yo. I was like, damn, they got Brie Larson and Chris Evans back. They must have been the most expensive. <laughs> <ones."> <laughs> True, 
I'm pretty sure she was like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. Sure. She's getting into everything, though, If you when you think about it. She's like, oh, yeah, sure, I'll do it. Yeah, she's, she's a YouTuber. She's in Fast and Furious now. She's doing it big. And um, last but not least, a moment of silence once again for E3. I fuck that shit. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Why are you even giving tribute to it? Uh, We cut so much ass on E3, but people don't, like, younger people don't realize how big it was back in the day. It was like the Mm. Super Bowl for video games. It Uh, was, but we didn't start getting, like, exclusive streaming content until, like, I would say the 2010s, and then that's when it got even more exciting. Yeah, like, the first time I saw it was on G4. Back mm-hmm. in like 2007, and it was great because they were revealing the Halo 3 trailer and they had to go mm-hmm. to commercial, <laughs> and yeah! everybody was pissed off. Yep, oh, great times! But I used to read about in the magazines, I was like, oh man, I want to go someday. And then, how the mighty have fallen, I don't think I, I, would... don't, I think it's gone for good this time. I had a magazine called mix zine and it was tokyo pop before tokyo pop exploded and flooded the market with manga right and right. mix zine uh went to e3 one year and they had booth babes like sailor moon <laughs> and the like nobody i notice okay i'm gonna say this if there's like a huge convention filled with guys there's going to be like no women and they're not going to say anything about it unless there's like a booth babe. But when there's more women about it, they think it's strange. So I'm like, I'm so confused. And and then I hear complaints that there's just too many women. I mean, sorry, not enough women. So it's like, do you want us there? Cause now there's, there's just women everywhere. Can you believe it? Women are people I know. in playing games. One girl wrote an article for like her E3 experience, because I think she worked on um, some popular games, and they were like, oh, did you work on Cooking Mama? Or um, <laughs> That's so sexist. I know. She worked, I think she worked on Sly Cooper, and she was like, no. But she was happy overall, because she said that there were no lines for the bathrooms. Uh, she got connections uh learned about the creepy people there and it's just a lot to take in very some weird yeah i'm sure people aren't really gonna miss it (laughs) yeah jeff Keeley was dancing on its grave like did you know summer game fest is starting june 10th and all these people are coming like and (laughs) the one guy that held a funeral for it it was just plugging summer games fest no, I'm not. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> it, was, it was great. I was dying. Was I was great. dying too. I, I'll post a, I'll post the link below so you can watch that. And I'll be posting a lot of links today because we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. But first up, we're going to get into it with some Yoko reacts. I got some great things. Are you ready? I'm ready, Freddy. All right. All right. Speaking of women, you know what I miss? I miss going to conventions, you know, anime, comic, anything. I just love the costumes, and this girl's costume right here, ooh, child, she give you nightmares, but you know how to pull it off. Go on to one this summer. Is this from um, Megacon in Orlando? No, this was uh, from a few weeks ago. Oh, shoot, yo! Yeah, that is amazing! She's the freaking the ring! <laughs> Yo! Can you believe this? This is the best cosplay I've seen in a long time. I know, is, man. Is this a child? I don't know. But you know what? Great. She could have been uh, really small. She yeah. had no shoes on. Yo, that scene in the movie when I was like 12 freaked me out. That was the scariest part of the movie. Honestly, yeah. yeah. Anyway, air, airport travel. You ever had to go on a plane and they had to confiscate something from you? That happened to me. 
when I had my curly locks, they confiscated my big shampoo. Oh boy. This girl knows. Oh my no. Pain. All right, let's let's see the results. Let's click on. It. Oh, this this is an old one. This is like a classic one. And you know what he looks like? Wait, wait let me click on it again because I don't think it went. He looks like Richie. <laughs> Nova? I, yeah, he looks like he looks like Nova. <laughs> no lie, I've saved. I freaking uh, I have this gift on my desktop because oh. it's funny. <laughs> oh, I guess I was late to the party, but yeah, his face is like perfect. He's like girl. He's so perfect. Cause like, like Nova gives me that look. <laughs> like girl, really? Yeah. Um, speaking of cosplay, should have followed up with this. I'm so good at transitioning. Hashtag Trans Visibility Awareness Day. Check out this cosplay. Oh, what? Let's see. My cami from Street Fighter 6. Looking good. Heck um, yeah. Yo, it's got the UK on the back. I love it. Yeah, man. Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat's coming back. Second, it's a good time to be a fighting game fan. Oh, definitely. Yeah, we eating good. Oh, that booty! Okay, I gotta get off Twitter because there's. I saw another spoiler for my show. Uh, <laughs> are you almost done? I really like. I can't. I have to wait till April twentieth to finish Ruby Volume Nine. I'm not watching it until I see everything at once. <laughs> Speaking of booty, this is something you should do for your YouTube channel. What is this? An, a baby? A booty squishy thingy? Did my dude take a picture of himself, cut himself out, <laughs> and glue a booty on there? And put a straw in it? Yeah, Are you? Oh my god. Oh my the air duster? Oh! <laughs> he made it fart! <laughs> Oh my I gosh. I doing that as like a short on your YouTube channel. I would love to do it. But guess what? I'm gonna have to paint it brown because I don't think they sell those booties brown. Yeah. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look. No, I'd have to go to AliExpress. This next one, I just thought it was funny. Americans always struggle with Japanese food. Oh dear. Here's this toddler struggling. Struggling hard. Uh, 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 uh. It it says this page doesn't exist. Wait, what? Yeah. Sweet. Has been deleted. Probably. That's funny. I can still see it. Anyway, just picture I like a two-year-old trying to use chopsticks and eat sushi. That's what it was. <laughs> oh, okay. I found those booties, but there's no brown ones, so I'm gonna have to change the color. You get a pack. You get a pack of twelve. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as you know, Resident Evil Four Remake has taken the world by storm. It's made a lot of money, but there's some people who have really, really specific complaints. Uh, maybe you can see what they are. Yes. Need this. Resident Evil Four. Steam reviews, having a very normal day. All right, my um, before I read it, one, they're probably gonna complain about Ashley, and two, they're pro before I read this, and two, they're probably going to complain about Leon not advancing on her or something like that. Let me just let me read. Okay, no Ashley saying, "Ugh, you pervert." No Ashley saying, "Hey, what are you looking at?" No an animation of Ashley covering her skirt. When you try to look up it and see her panties, no being able to freely stare at Ashley's panties from the bottom of a high enough ladder, no getting an accidental Ashley upskirt dialogue when performing a suplex on an enemy, no quick half a second slip of Ashley's panties during the cutscene where she and Leon leap through the church window to escape from the crossbow. Uh, Illuminados. No easy distance panty shot of Ashley when she's cowering in fear in the presence of enemies. 
hoping for a clean angle of her white panties. No aiming a knife or a grenade towards the sky in, in certain areas to lower the camera at a low angle to catch a glimpse of Ashley's panties. No glimpse of Ashley's panties during the cutscene when she is pushed by the island Ganado. When she's in captivity on the island. No shot of Ashley's panties as she crawls beneath the table during the section in the castle where she is playable. No swift peek of Ashley's panties as she exits the dumpster that she was hiding inside of. No unintentional shot of her panties as she flails around calling Leon for help in the arms of an enemy as they forcibly remove her from the room. No cheeky between legs. For all the things this game is doing right, it's censored possibly even the downright removed the things people wanted most. Did they? Oh my god. I mean, the last thing I heard, we have people coming out here wanting a quality game and gameplay. I've never heard of somebody actually really thirsting over Ashley that much. People have been riding this game hard, like 10 out of 10, left and right. This guy just woke up. You know what? If you want to see her panties so bad, just play the original. I have a copy on the Wii. I'll lend it to you, pal. <laughs> the Wii version. That's all he's worth. <laughs> the Wii version is a fun version. I'll, I'll play it with you when you come over. Yeah. I'm buying it. Last I got five life. on it. Last but not least, you've probably seen this already, but it is worth sharing again. Sonic the Hedgehog made a new game. It's free on Steam right now. Oh, I just got it. I didn't open it up to play it yet. I love these types of games, but I only play them when I'm really burnt out so I can be immersed <laughs> like a book. Very cool. Uh, yeah. The murder of Sonic. And I hear it's an actually good game. Yeah, I love that they're just embracing his meme status. It's like, we're just going to do this thing. Get free mm -hmm. fans. That was Yoko Reacts. Lots of fun things. I got more things to show you next time. But before we get to the feature presentation, I've seen a lot of movies this month. So I'm going to try to go through them rapid fire style. Hitting you with the mention or reviews. Also two TV shows. So I'm going to be quick. You, you get me? Sure. You smell me? All right. March Madness. Here we come. First off, let's talk about the TV shows. The Last of Us. Awesome video game adaptation. Had a great time from start to finish. I got my mom hooked on it. She's like, oh, where's the next one? Where's the next one? Aww. It was very wholesome. And I haven't played the game in so long. If there were any like big differences to the story, I didn't notice. But overall, I dug it. You know, a lot of people said they should have been more infected. But the true horror of those games is the people in that world. It was. I agree. Yeah. I agree, my dude. Oh my gosh, they were harder than the um, the, the monsters. monsters. Yeah. Because you could predict. Where the monsters would go, where 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 they would go, how they would behave, and why they do what they do versus the people. Wow, y'all are just trifling. Yeah, but it's been praised to death. Go out and watch. Next show is called Swarm. It's from the creators of Atlanta. It's about this obsessed fan who is obsessed with an artist who's in basically Beyonce. They call her Nyjah, but everything about her is like to the T. It's like Beyonce, they reference themselves to the, as the beehive and all that stuff. Wow. So her thing is she goes around looking up people on Twitter who's talking trash about Beyonce and going them to their house and killing them. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, man, but the show gets wild. It, it's it's only seven episodes, half hour each. It's a quick afternoon binge. I recommend it. If you want, we'll go watch some of it when you come over. It's, it's a good time. All right. And Billy Eilish is in. Anywho, down to the movies. Creed 3 was a great film. 
I want them to keep this a trilogy because I feel like all three movies in the trilogy are super solid. But now they're starting a Creed cinematic universe. They have a Creed anime. They're gonna do a spinoff off of his daughter, and I'm just like, no, just keep it a trilogy. Overall, it was a great fight. The last fight was the best part. It was definitely anime inspired. They go to the Shadow Realm. It's a good time. Scream Six. Not playing. Scream Six. Up. Uh, Scream Five. I thought was solid, but uh, you know, it probably it, it could have been better. Maybe it used uh, more uh, elaborate kills, so to speak. But uh, Scream Scream Six comes out swinging off the bat. They're in New York time. <laughs> they're, in, they're in New York this time, baby. They're, they're getting stabbed on the subway. They're getting stabbed in the apartment buildings. They're getting shotguns to the face in the bodegas. It's just like living in New York. For real. They got that part down right. And the new cast of characters, they're a little light. Can't wait to see where this franchise goes next. Now we got the biggest cinematic hit of the month. Shazam! Fury of the Gods making all the money at the box office. Am I right? I didn't even know it was in the movie theater at all. Exactly. You know that meme where they're like, hey, let's go fight somewhere empty. They're talking about the movie theater that's playing Shazam! Fury of the Gods. (laughs) Me and Yoko, we saw the first one a few months ago for Christmas. We enjoyed it, right? You enjoyed it? I enjoyed it. Oh, that was wholesome. I, 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 part of me was just like, "Wow, what a great meal!" I only want one, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I this, don't want seconds. This movie, you know, it didn't need to be a sequel because the boy that plays Billy Batson, he gets only five minutes of screen time when he was the main character of the first Shazam, and the best part of the movie was him learning his powers and, you know, just being a kid and goofy superhero. And now he's 18 and he's still acting like a 13 year old when he's in Zachary Levi's body. It doesn't work. And the other people on the team are pretty boring. They get really nothing to do. The only one that gets stuff to do is the guy with the crutches. His name is Freddy. Movie should have been about him. It was a disappointment. And I can see why it's flopping at the box office. Dang. Last but not least, John Wick chapter four. It's a beautiful action balls to the wall spectacular if you love the other john wicks you're gonna love this if you love action movies you're gonna love this if you love keanu reeves you're gonna love this i say go out and see it on the big screen let's show keanu love and i'm out all right Woo. that was a lot gonna stay in the house and not watch any movie no that's I'm right playing. that's uh. right shelter summer baby Shelter Summer! And now, our feature presentation. Right now, weird Mario fandom. Take the lead on this. All right. This is the part, everybody, where we tried to discover what was the most disturbing about the Mario fandom. Was it the people? The fans, the developers. Actually, we discovered that it was almost none of the above. And the fandom ended up being a little more wholesome than we thought. <laughs> a lot unlike, more wholesome. Yeah, unlike the Sonic fandom, where I'm so used to the abuse of disgusting memes and feet pics and... <sighs> I hate it all and from Sonic and and then Mario like I think the worst I saw was Mario kissing Bowser on the lips and if that's a crime well I don't know it's better than <laughs> it's better than him kissing his brother right yeah which I I saw too but you know I it was not nearly as bad foreshadowing foreshadowing Anyway, so we were just trying to go through, and I actually spent a couple days looking for stuff, and then I double-checked today, and the the biggest thing to the Sonic fandom are the video game mods and the creepypastas. True, true that. Like, my favorite is the possessed Super Mario 
car- game cartridge. And boy, there are a lot of videos like that. If you go to YouTube and type in, you know, creepy pasta Mario stories, it's going to say creepy pasta Mario 64 right off the bat. I think I've I think I've read one of those on the show once. <laughs> yeah, you read one. Yeah. Um I listened to one years ago. Uh but it's probably the same one cuz this one there's a guy with almost a million views that says Mario in quotes. Creepy pasta. Um every copy of Mario 64 is personalized. Creepy pasta. Uh the scariest Mario Rob hack. Like safe to say that having a boring cult Mario culture, you know, is a little more reassuring and safe, especially for the kids. Keep them safe. What about you? What did you find? Oh, um, I got a lot of stuff, <laughs> and I only All right. in like forty minutes. <laughs> uh, All right, I'm we'll just volleyball. I'm going to start off with some fan theories that I've read. Mm-hmm. Um, people, Mario fans believe that the actors are in a stage show because in 64, they're getting followed by actual cameras. And um, I think in Paper Mario, it's like framed as like they're a yeah, part of the yeah. show and there's an audience. Yeah. So that's interesting. There's another one that says Wario is a stalker because he's always like butting into Mario's business, dressing like him. He's like obsessed. Yeah. Um, there's the demons from Mario Galaxy in one of the levels. You can see them like creeping up mm-hmm. top, and then as you go through further and further level, they come closer, and they're supposed to be from another dimension. Yeah. Oh, I like this one. Uh, the shy guys wear masks because they're yeah. Underneath. That is the biggest one. Like when I was searching, I'm I'm like ah, I'm pretty sure we're gonna find the same. Yeah, Stuff. it makes sense. It's like, what do their faces look like? Ooh. Um, Ooh. There's one from Luigi's Mansion where he's reading a letter and then there's lightning and you can see a shadow of Luigi kind of like hovering and people think that, oh, he like hung himself at some point. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, that's what the fans think. Um, there's one that says Mario's races against reptiles. <laughs> That, yo, I made that theory years ago because I was like, wait a minute. I don't think anybody would be attacking him if he wasn't attacking them. And I guess, anyway, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> and um, I think there was something in like a manual that said uh, the people in the Mushroom Kingdom would turn into bricks. So yep, I saw that one. <laughs> you break them and the coins come out. The coins are supposed to be their soul. Oh, God. I don't think it's that deep at all. <laughs> I really don't think that's that deep. No, but people like to... People love to speculate. And then, um, of course, there's, like, the urban legend of Luigi and Mario 64. It's called El is Real 2401. Because of this freaking statue that was uh in the courtyard. And people were like... They, they read the text and it says... It resembles Luigi's real 2401. So people for years are like, oh, Luigi's somewhere in the game. And then um, on July 25th, 2020, 24 years in one month, hence 2401 after the game was released, people found Mm -hmm. a prototype model of Luigi in Super Mario 64. Ooh. So chances are they found it a lot sooner, but they waited. (laughs) Yeah. So that they, you know, hey the prophecy (laughs) and that's just one of the many urban (laughs) legends there's a whole uh, wikipedia page about them i'm not going through all of it i'll 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 put the links in the description if you want to read more funny yeah i'm just gonna send all this stuff to you so i i know where to find it later yeah but it's you know it's interesting stuff very interesting stuff. Um, there's this weird Mario comic. Oh uh, yeah, Japanese. is it the one that we discussed? Yeah, it's it's called Shitamachi Ninju 
yeah i'm not i'm butchering it but uh i haven't seen it myself but to paraphrase it's it's just bizarre mario's telling toad to like kill bowser and stuff like that uh <laughs> the like, i can't read japanese but the it's not animated it's like a slideshow type of thing and it looks like they're using mario plushies it's just it's yeah weird. huh it's not the content you expect from mario universe yeah unfortunately what i'm looking at right now it's not translated but you know if you're into like mario lost media and stuff like that it's worth checking it out yeah hey hey check it out hey hey check it out check it out what 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 what's it all about okay uh, what you it's got? just well i have a lot of i knew some of our stuff was going to cross over but i was just like well i know sonic so let's just see what mario and sonic things crossed over and people were comparing how sonic's story lore can be a little bit more adult and is a little more robust than mario's because mario just run hit brick and survive <laughs> right run, hit brick and survive yeah yes uh even in the horror genre mario and sonic rival rivalry is outstanding um people here's what one i'm on reddit and this one person said this is the song of the hedgehog reddit it says it kind of reflects them too mario has more sophisticated popular pastas involving conspiracy theories and ais weird law enforcement and whatnot Sonic, on the other hand, is more bold with creepy haunted games that will kill you and demons that will kill you at night. <laughs> what? And then one, yeah, I'm like, dude, I don't know. And this one person goes, Sonic creepy passes are rough with lots of gore, thousands of fan games which change mechanics and mecha me mechanisms. And then they start talking about creep. Chris Chan being like the worst in the fandom. Mario is like a carpenter making a birdhouse while Sonic is the animal just making a hole in a tree. I'm like, oh my God. And it's like, uh, you can't. It all comes back to Sonic in some way, shape, or form now. Um, the other one was uh, fan art. We got a plethora of fan art. No matter what. Whatever fandom you have, whatever fandom you love, there's always going to be a gender swap, a Rule 34, a um, anthropomorphic version, or a race-swapped version. And you know what? I barely found any of that in the Mario fan art realm. <laughs> I was shocked. I was just like, wow, this truly is a safe space. Is yeah. this what the conservatives were looking for the whole time? No. Listen, when we could talk about fan art, you got to talk about the legend of Bowsette. Of course. Which, uh, can I read the definition yeah, of Bowsette? Yes. Please. Okay. This is the Google version of Bowsette. Bowsette, a Koopa Hime, rom roman romanized Koopa Hime. Uh, is a fan-made Moe anthropomorphized and gender-swapped version of Mario from the uh, of, from the Mario franchise, uh, in which he is trans where in which Bowser is transformed by the Super Crown to resemble Princess Peach, and then the. The, a different definition is she's the Princess Peach version of Bowser that devel de developed quite a following despite the fact that she technically didn't exist within the Mario universe. Uh, an artist named Aki Aiki92 is credited for popularizing the idea via a comic strip in which Mario leaves Peach for Bowsette. And it's like Sonic fan art is very DBZ looking, right? Yeah. Mar uh, Mar Mario fan art DBZ. Sonic fan art is very like, what the f... Fill in the blank here. 
And there's a lot of manga and regular comics. We got just very childhood innocence within this fandom. And my guess to Frisky was, I think because Mario is an actual older male adult. I shouldn't say male adult. I just want to say man. He's just an older man. He looks like... <laughs> what What age do you think uh, Mario could be, roughly? Yeah, he's probably in his late 30s, early 40s. That's what I was thinking, too. You know? Listen, like... I want to talk about, before we move on from Bowsette, mm -hmm. this is why Bowsette was created. Because there's no... Barely any women... In the Mario lore, you got Peach, Daisy, Rosalina, and I guess Birdo. <laughs> that's yeah. it. Yeah. So that's why it's so wholesome. It's like, you know, there's not a lot to sexualize there. So they needed to create something from scratch. Dang. For them to get off to. It's just sad, though, now. Now it just sounds sad. Yeah. And if you guys are listening and don't know what Bowsette is, just... Google it, and you'll get tons and tons of images. And you sure cosplays. will. A lot of girls cosplayed as her back yep. in the day. She was hot. She was a hot topic for a while. Yeah, I remember. I'm like, where? Where's this stuff coming from? I was. It's like how I am now because of um, Resident Evil Four Remake. Everybody's drawing Ashley as a mouse, and that's just all over my damn timeline. Yes, yeah, yo, somebody said that to me this morning. Yo, and I was like, wow. And I saw the original post. Literally, someone woke up and was like, "What if you started Resident Evil Four and Ashley was just a little mouse instead?" And you know, it was just a cute little drawing. And yo, people took that idea and just ran with it. That's the same thing that happened with Bowsette, bro. Yep. And I can't fault them for it. No, it's 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 fine. You know, I'm not I'm not talking trash about it. I'm just saying it's fascinating. It's very interesting to me. Yeah, I pff, listen, girl. I agree. <laughs> girl. I agree. Girl. All right. Um, I got some creepy Mario games to talk. All about. All right. What what games did you discover? Um, there's they're all from the same video. Um, I'll send you the link right now. I you bet you it's the on. same one I watched. I swear. Probably. Again, it's mostly. Um, yeah, it's the same one I watched. Yeah. It's Mario Creepy Pastas. Uh, there's three of them. It's called I Hate One, I Hate You By, which is mm -hmm. Super Mario World, but everything's like spooky ghosts. scary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Spooky scary. The enemies have blood on their eyes, and you have to fight Luigi, and then you kick him into lava, and he burns. <laughs> Dang. And there's scary images in there, you know, little jump scares. It's your typical, like, ROM hack. Uh, the next one is called Luigi's Insanity, and you're in a creepy mansion doing your Luigi's Mansion thing, but there's, like, an evil Luigi, and he's chasing you. He has mm -hmm. blood in his eyes, too, and you, you can hide in the toilet. Apparently, that's pretty cool. <laughs> you can hide in the toilet. Can hide in the toilet. Yesterday was April Fool's, and I had no toilet paper in my stall, so I was pranked, baby. Yeah, that, that's a real prank. I'm sorry to happen to you. Yeah. Let's start a GoFundMe. I need toilet paper. Um, the last game in this video is called The Call of Shadulu, which seems to be another Mario World hack. And he's not fighting your typical Goombas. He's fighting, like, like creatures. And everything looks dark and spooky. And that's... Uh, that's... Yeah, he's, like, in a blood world. Like, it's taking everything that's great about Mario, all the bright colors, and just throwing them out the window. Just putting him in a nightmare fuel world. And I don't like that. That's not my Mario. Mm-mm. Not my Mario. Yeah, and I'm sure there's many more games out there, but you know this is the one I found. Um, remember that PETA game when a uh, 3D World came out, or 3D Land, and PETA was like, Mario shouldn't wear a Tanuki suit. You remember that? Oh yeah, I remember that very clearly, and it was just, it was like news for a day, and everyone was like, what's going on? He's not killing anybody. 
I'm very confused. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he's like running. I forgot. He's like, oh, okay. He's Mario took. I'm, I'm looking at it now. <laughs> Mario takes the skin off a of Tanuki, and the Tanuki is running. And you can see his flesh, and he's trying to chase Mario and get his skin back. That's the game. Oh, oh, so that's like a parody. Oh god. I, mean, I don't know who made it, but this was made after Peta was like making a big fuss about the Tanuki suit. Poor Peta. Yeah, this is real stuff, kids. Real stuff. Look it up. Yeah, he gets it back. I'll send you that as well. I just came to me because I was just such a weird time. I will agree. I will agree. Yeah. Oh, man. That's just so weird. Uh, what else am I was on my list? Because I, I, I looked up a whole bunch of things. I was trying to look up the Mario movie, the original one, and the controversy behind that. Because I guess apparently there was supposed to be the Mario movie closest to the game. And they were going to have a real Princess Peach. And they were going to... Uh, Mario was supposed to go to another world as well. This, that, and a third didn't happen. Well, yeah, at one point it was supposed to be a, a legit Mario movie, but it went through like different screenwriters and directors. And by the time yeah. it got to filming, it was just something completely different. There's a lot of YouTube videos on the behind the scenes of the Super Mario movie. Bob Hoskins would like drink on set, and yep, he yep. hated John Leguizamo. It's it's wild, dude. Yeah. Oh, man. And then there's the 1986 Super Mario anime. And then there was, like, another Mario anime, but I can't find it. But this Mario anime from 86 looks like a... Remember Nick Jr.? <laughs> yes. Okay, for Thanks. those of you who don't know, Nickelodeon had a preschool block during the day. So when you would watch TV, you'd watch something like Eureka's Castle, Lugger's Window. And they had a show called The Little Bits, which was an actual anime translated in English. And this looks like it's from the same damn studio. Very Miyazaki early day-esque. Down to the cover. So, like, <laughs> Mario's wearing his hat and it has a peach on it. So I assume it's like, oh, the same what? peach. Is that a gun? Yeah, he he, he's, got, he's got a gun. <laughs> Mario's got a gun. So There's another sad. one that was supposed to be like a TV show, but I can't find it. I had it on a hard drive, but I don't know where the Dickens it could be. Yeah. Um, all I have left right now is just uh, the fan art that I found. And then most I can't even like, show you. Not even yeah, bad. Go ahead. It's just kind of cool. Yeah, honestly, I might show you. I might watch the Mario anime after we're done. <laughs> she... Sit and relax. Sit and relax. But, like, I'm just so baffled at how tame everything is. <laughs> and because almost every fandom is corrupt in some way, but I'm glad I'm actually wrong for this shit. I'm glad I'm actually wrong. Do you know why I'm I'm glad I'm wrong? Why? Because I'm not exhausted and I don't have to deal with creepies. That's yeah. the best part. I'm going to show you the creepiest uh, fan art I found so far. It's, this is like the weirdest thing I was able to find. Mario's got a gun. Saving the peaches. Oh, oh dear. Yeah. This see, this is what I was expecting. <laughs> That's a the pregnant seahorse Mario. <laughs> That's it. Could have been so much worse though. You know? It's true. It's true. Mario's good. Alright, so I'm just gonna start sharing fan art. Cause that's what I got. That's yeah. what I got. My favorite, see, I, I, I got rid of my DeviantArt. And my favorite, when I was exploring DeviantArt, I did the Russian roulette, right? And one of them 
was a guy who drew anime girls with swollen knees. Like, <laughs> what? big, yes, big swollen knees. And it just didn't make any sense to me. I don't understand. See, now this fan art is cool. It's it's cute. I like Waluigi and Wario like this. And you know what? Guess what? It's on Tumblr, so it's probably a concept artist just dicking around on here, you know? Oh, that's what you saw? That's not what I meant to say to you. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm looking at some wholesome shit here. You're just... <laughs> It you know I you, I, it's a I don't know maybe it's a, try this link this is this is what I got <laughs> I know I so see you're it now. you're you're typing in the Google links you gotta go directly into the post and send it I'm trying stop yelling at me not working this ah, is what I got from Tumblr. official it's you're not allowed Tumblr. Tumblr's Tumblr's only for women yeah. I have to do it this way because I can't. It. Interesting. Danny's gonna get, but yeah, these are the booze. They're like hugging it out. I hate the yep. booze from Mario. Not even bad. No, it's, it's not, not bad. even bad. It just bothers me because I, think... I hate the fucking booze so much. Oh, that's fair. I think the worst fan art I've seen is just Incineroar and Bowser having a relationship. Like right off the bat, that's the worst I've ever seen. And you know what? I don't want to go any further. You know? Anyway, anything else we can dig up? I didn't think. I didn't think for the life of me. I'm sending you. Just, right, this I'm is just creepy. sending you more fan art. Like this is what oh, we're gonna Lord. do. Just go look at this fan art. Nah, I think we're. This episode's done. I okay. I will say here's here's a really good one. Um, ha have you seen the Mario and Sonic DBZ uh, animation? Uh, no. It's Mario Brothers Z. It is freaking amazing. It came out oh, a yeah. very long time ago. Oh yeah, I heard it's it. a yeah, it's old school. Yeah, it's like a three hour long thing, and this is stuff that like I admire. You know? Yeah. But what do you guys think of the Mario fandom? Are you a part of it? Well, I think it's it's so wholesome. That's why you see so many creepy pastas about it, because that's the point of a creepy pasta. You take something something innocent and then you flip mm -hmm. it on its head and you make it demonic and evil. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, look at this one. This is cute. Look at my meanwhile, arm, damn it. Meanwhile, I'm over here. Um, okay, that's wholesome. So, like, I'm here for it. Any Anything else? Uh, as of right now, no. Like, I'm, again, I'm just sending you art. Um, oh, what the hell is that one? <laughs> it's Bowser and Bowser Mommy, which I love. Well, that's dope. I like right? that. Bowser and Mom. Wow, so that's that's the real Bowsette. Right? Female Bowser. It, I've, you know, it, I've never seen female Bowser before. Yeah, like, like an actual... That's not Bowsette, but like an actual, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Well, you're prolonging it. We could end it here. <laughs> she, she wants me to end it here, folks. But it doesn't end here because I'm going to do some fan fiction later. <laughs> All right. And, well, um, you go do that fan fiction. I think we have presented a lot. I'm just curious to know. What, I, I'm curious. I want to know what other people you know search up in the fandom what part what kernels what what corners what so these are the mario brothers dressed as illumination characters um okay you gotta see this one 
Okay, last, last one, one and I'm jumping one. ship. <laughs> I sent you the one of Daisy that looks like Wednesday Adams. Yeah, you got to see this one. And then I got two galleries that I'll just post for anyone who's listening who wants to see even more funky Mario art. Dun, dun, dun. Wow, did you see Ashley and... Ashley twins. <laughs> yes, Mary Kate. Is Ashley. that Bob Saget in the background? Hell yeah, that's Bob Saget. I'm here rest for in, this. Rest in peace. Okay, let's do the dimensional diary. What is your favorite childhood movie? Who framed Roger Rabbit? I don't even have to think about that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Why? Tell me why. Uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit kind of shaped my thought process for comedy and uh, acting. And it has always been the comfort movie of choice, the inspiration behind me wanting to be an illustrator slash animator but animation's hard so i'm not doing that right now it's just overall uh a a good detective flick and it's just fun it is it's very fun what about you it holds up i think it holds up in court um uh, damn i want to say the fox and the hound Really? I want to say that one, but I feel like I've seen other movies more times. But The Fox and the Hound is always the one that, when I look back on it, I can feel something. I, I you know, I get emotional about it. Like, yeah. Damn, you know, it's, a, it's a tragic story about two friends separated by a situation that's out of their hands. Definitely. And it's relatable. Definitely. It's relatable to I would... and kids. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, what would you say? I I always thought of it as I got older, like when we were doing video analysis in college, that it was about um, an allegory for race and status and how although you can be friends, the adults and the environment around you try to tell you that you cannot, even though it's stupid that you have to listen to that and you don't have to you know and yeah go ahead yeah i never thought of it that way but it's true Mm -hmm. you know as a kid you don't think of it like that but yeah you know there's definitely some undertones racial undertones there and uh yeah man uh i hope they don't remake it as a live action movie they already did a direct sequel to it and Reba was in it, and it was with bad. Johnny Cash. <laughs> it was such a stupid sequel because they were still um, they were still young in that movie, so it was kind of like an in betweenquel, like The Lion King one and a half. So an unnecessary story. I hated that one. Yeah, I I didn't despise that version of the fox and the hound but i agree that it was an unnecessary story yeah man but as a kid you know what i watched like every day power rangers well that that too but you know what else what i would watch like the original star wars trilogy on vhs i would watch it every day you know you're not the first person to say that to me because i've met quite a few people who just uh there was like a a woman who said uh she would watch it every day with her her dad that was like the fondest memories that she would have with her father uh up until before he passed away so like it's very interesting how a uh, good franchise how good for good franchise gone bad <laughs> oh, no. yeah those three movies they were just just captured my imagination i never got tired of watching them i was just 
on a loop. My mom would tell me, like, yo, you watch some tapes until they... Until the tape came out of the damn cassette. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, and now I look at Star Wars and I'm like, oh, cool, indigestion. Yeah, that's about right. So, um, any last thoughts before you see the Mario movie? Any predictions? Nah, I want to go in surprised. I don't want to look at any previews. I don't want to look at any hype things because Twitter already ruined a lot of stuff for me this week. So I'm staying off of Twitter. So if you send me something, I'm not going to look at it until I visit you. (laughs) (laughs) That's fair. Um, Yeah, first reactions are coming out as we speak and they're pretty positive. So let's hope that holds true when we watch the movie next week. All right. Yeah. Uh, Hope you guys enjoyed this part of the episode plenty of art to see in the comments i mean the links below and uh join me as i read some fan fiction with a special guest but yoko's dipping all right (laughs) peace all right guys we are at the fan fiction side of the episode and with me I have Maddie on the line. What's up, Maddie? Hello, hello. Um, well, I am going to be bringing to you um, something that is fairly different, fairly special, uh, coming from someone that does not write fan fiction, does not know how to properly write fan fiction, and you're going to be getting uh, two moments of this. Um, I can accurately describe this as a multiverse of madness. Because you are getting Marvel and you are getting Mario. In ways the two should never come together. Alright, I'm excited. But first, I got two fan fictions I'd like to share with you right now. Do I want to read this very cringy Mario Brothers fanfic with light incest? (laughs) Um. (laughs) Yes. Do you want to? Do you want to bleep out the things that will haunt us forever? It's not explicit. I will say that. It's not explicit, but it is cringe for sure. You know what? Um, I think you might need to bring some cringe into this. Okay. This one is called Super Brothers Odyssey. Oh. (laughs) It was a lovely evening in the Mushroom Kingdom. At least, it wasn't any place other than the Mario Brothers household. Luigi was sat at the kitchen table, absentmindedly dumbing through a newspaper. Mario had been gone for a few weeks, chasing after Bowser and Peach again. And almost every day, there were new sightings of Mario and Bowser all around the world. However, those sightings had come to an abrupt end a few days ago, with reports stating that Mario had followed Bowser back to the Koopa Kingdom to stop their wedding. He knew his brother would pull through all the same, but it always made him extra nervous when he would lose track of where he was. Of course, he was always worried about Mario, just the same way his brother always cared about him. Suddenly, there was a clattering at the door. Luigi looked up from his newspaper to see his older brother step into the house, immaculately dressed in a stunning white suit. Mario! Luigi jumped up from his seat, hugged his brother tight, relieved that he was still alright. Bro, you look so... As he looked at his brother up and down in closer detail, he felt his heart fluttering. I've never seen you so handsome. He always thought his brother was a handsome man, even if you managed to get him out of his overalls and to be in such a dapper suit just proved him absolutely right. Mario looked up from under the brim of his top hat at his brother's adoring gaze. In spite of his horrible mood and just how tired he was at the moment, He couldn't help but smile. 
he, he could always rely on Luigi to show him some love. Thanks, bro. I needed that. After giving his brother a firm squeeze back, Mario grabbed the white top hat from his head and tossed it onto the hat rack into the side of the room. Oh my gosh, Mario! Finally getting his first good look at Mario's face. He was struck with something close to fear at the sight before him. Deep bags hung on their Mario's puffy eyes, a tired smile that he could tell Mario was using all his strength to keep raised. His brother looked so tired, so hurt, almost dead. What happened to you? Did, did Bowser have something to do with this? It's a hard life. <laughs> you know, he did, bro. Mario left Luigi's arms and slowly shuffled to the kitchen table, undoing his tie and throwing his overcoat aside. But let's just say that in the end, he probably won't be coming for Peach for quite a while. We had an understanding. He turned blindly to sit down on a chair, but found himself instead falling into the arms of his little brother. Mario, you absolutely beat Catching his breast. <laughs> They're saving Mario from tossing himself onto the floor. Luigi hoisted his brother up into his arms. I'm putting you to bed right now. You don't have to do this every time. Mario was equal parts dead tired and dumbfounded as he found himself being carried bridal style to his room by his little brother. Oh god, this is a setup to get his overalls off. <laughs> Luigi was far more powerful than he often gave himself credit for, but Mario knew from experience to never underestimate his brother. He could always rely on his brother even when his brother couldn't rely on himself. It was one of the things he loved the most about him. I can handle this myself, bro. At least let me help you get ready for bed. I can tell you this was a big one for you. Luigi smiled warmly at his brother as he sent the bearish mouth down into bed before <laughs> Mario could even move his arms. Luigi was busy at work getting his shoes off. Mario watched intently at his brother as he carefully untied his pristine shoes and set them aside in orderly fashion. He unbuttoned his shirt as if in a trance, and tossed it aside. There we go. Luigi smiled warmly as he folded Mario's socks and sat them next to his shoes. Mario's feet looked even more beat up than usual, a sure sign of a rough adventure. He looked up to check if Mario was done with his shirt and immediately began blushing like mad as he watched his shirtless older brother slowly unzipping his fly. Oh, fuck me. I was staring right through him. It was as if his brother was stripping down to tease him. But Luigi no better than to assume Mario was just out of it from exhaustion. Bro, a little help? Mario's cheeks took on a rosy hue as he stared at down his brother, hand cupping his crotch as he struggled to get out of his pants. When Cappy gifted him with his suit, he failed to give him any underwear. Oh, Luigi wanted to sit and soak up his brother's unintentionally erotic display. But his mission to put Mario to bed helped to keep him moving. Right. With both hands, he helped pull Mario's pants down around his ankles. You you need some fresh boxers? Luigi tried to avert his eyes to give Mario his due respect. Yes, please. Mario couldn't help but smirk at his brother's shyness. They lived together all their lives, and Luigi still respected his privacy enough to not look at his naked body. Mario would never extend the same politeness to his brother. <laughs> oh. let's, let's see. Luigi went to Mario's drawer and dug through a pair of underwear, finally setting on a pair of boxers with a Starman pattern. While he wasn't one for plain white with the pattern, when Mario would wear them, he would look so handsome and erotic. He oh, turned, God. <laughs> he turned to find Mario on the verge of sleep. He pretended his eyes weren't glued to Mario's barely conceived penis behind his limp once per hand. Here. Ah, thanks. Mario smiled, weakly grabbing the underwear. Taking hold of them with both hands, he intentionally took his time reaching down to loop them between his feet 
spreading his legs wide open and slowly pulling them up to his knees, being sure Luigi's eyes stayed locked onto his crotch. After all the time Mario spent staring at Luigi naked's form against his will, he wanted Luigi to have the opportunity to look at his without shame. As a sign of respect, of course. He pulled the boxers up to his waist, his cock and balls framed almost proudly against the yellow stars. As he pulled the waistband up and over. Are <laughs> you playing? <laughs> it's appropriate. Luigi felt like he was on fire. His brother was so brazen and sexy. He would never have so much confidence in his body to be so open with Mario. At least not as long as he was just his brother. You all set? Luigi stepped closer to bed, <laughs> fluffing Mario's pillows as Mario removed his silky white gloves and settled into rest. I'm okay. Mario leaned back against his freshly fluffed pillow and let out a relaxed sigh as he felt his cover drape over him, thanks to his brother. Thank you so much, bro. It's no problem. I always love to help you in any way I can, bro. Luigi leaned in close and gave his brother a smart, small smooch on the forehead. Get some rest and I'll talk to you later. Luigi turned to leave when he felt his brother's hand in his. You know, Luigi, I spent all of this last adventure trying to win the heart of a princess. Mario tugged on Luigi's arm, pulling his brother close. But I don't need to do that when I've got a wonderful prince right here waiting for me. Mama Mario, thank you. Luigi was melting. His brother always paid him compliments, but never one as sweet as this. I'll always be here because I love you, bro. I love you too, Luigi. <laughs> Mario smiled deviously at his brother as he got the best, worst idea ever. Let me give you something I was saving for the princess. Honestly, you deserve it more than she does. Luigi was Please blushing. Please, God, don't be a kiss. <laughs> Luigi was blushing so brightly. Now Mario had a gift for him. Eh, what? Wah, wah. Without a moment's warning, <laughs> Luigi found himself dragged into bed with his brother. All he had was a brief moment to look into his brother's smoldering eyes before their faces came together. <laughs> His, brother, <laughs> trying, his brother's rough lips pressed against his his heart raced as he kissed back he thought he had died when he felt his brother <laughs> growl with passion as their lips parted oh, he knew he had died when his brother's hot tongue pulled his own into a <laughs> tango unfortunately dreams all come to an end and just as quickly as he pushed forward Mario was retreating sloppy strands of shared drool hanging from his tongue. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I understand why Jen pressed no on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute. Mario smirked at his brother. I always wanted to kiss you like that, you know? He chuckled. <laughs> Luigi was beside himself. In just a second, everything he ever felt for his big brother was confirmed to him. Y y y you mean... Mario, we'll talk about it. Mario rolled over to settle into sleep when I get back up. Luigi was absolutely at a loss for words. His brother was always such a cocky bastard, always punching first without a thought, always taking what he wanted. It's one of the things he loved the most about his brother. <laughs> In that case, <laughs> Mario rolled over. He was absolutely shocked to see his brother taking off his clothes. His overalls fell to the floor. His shirt rose over his head as he stepped out of his shoes. His brother stood before him clad in green briefs with white trim. He ate up the sight greedily as he watched his brother slide into bed with him. I'll just sleep with you. That way, I can keep you on. Luigi blushed brightly as he grabbed onto his brother, snuggling into his chest. <laughs> All right, then. Mario smirked down at his brother, caressing his back, holding him close in his arms, being sure to grind their crotches to each other. <laughs> yeah, this this should uh, this should come with an emotional crisis hotline uh, <laughs> yeah. 
after it. But if I have a case of the morning mushroom, Mario made his offer obvious to his brother, praying in his head that Luigi would accept them. Then you'll be in good hands. <laughs> Luigi swallowed his fear. <laughs> not that I even want that tone. to make sense, but that does not make sense. No. He had waited so long for this. Wanted it so bad. Wanted him so bad. Because that's one pipe that I've wanted to take care of for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Tongue in cheek. A wave of relief washed over Mario as he and his brother came to an understanding. Good, because I feel like I should have. Because I feel like I should have come to you a long time ago. Because <laughs> his brother so Ew, they're plumbers and they clean each other's pipes. <laughs> Ew. My beautiful, caring brother. My handsome, courageous brother. Luigi hugged Mario tight, his heart filling up with the white hot joy and love. I love you so much, Mario. I love you too, Luigi. Mario yawned softly and began to nod off. Being with you will be my greatest odyssey. <laughs> and at the end it says, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, no. <laughs> no, no. I, I told you it was cringe. Oh, yes, you, um, that cannot be denied. <laughs> I, um, I brought up a soundboard to, uh, express my deep anxiety and displeasure about that. Ooh. Uh, all I can say is... <laughs> Let's see and furthermore, it also, um, I, I <laughs> okay, um, writer's workshop time. Not that any of that deserves to exist. Um, there are no bad stories, except maybe that one. <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot of bad, but there's stories with bad intentions. And that is so many bad intentions. Ooh. And on top of that, um, mushroom. Um, not a good metaphor for that. Not a good metaphor for that. I don't want, there does not need to be a good metaphor for that, but that is not one. No. And, and I'm not going to think what could have possibly even been better than that because it does not deserve our time, our thoughts. This person deserves um uh yeah, they they deserve to go play uh, peekaboo with a uh a lawnmower. <laughs> God. That was ruthless. That was ruthless. How are you going to do Mario like that? Alright, I found <laughs> something with Mario and Sonic. It's Mario Sonic. Is, uh, oh. is there shipping Moronic? No, no, no. <laughs> this, this seems to be in good taste. This seems to be safe for work. It's Mario and Sonic All-Stars Adventure. One day in the peaceful world known to its inhabitants as the Mushroom Kingdom, two familiar problems were taking a stroll down the brick path to meet Princess Peach, the kind and selfless ruler of the kingdom, in the middle of Mushroom Valley to have a picnic celebration for the final defeat of Bowser, the evil, greedy, and selfish king of the Koopas. Soon, the two Blum Plumber brothers finally made it to the middle of Mushroom Kingdom. The red brother, Mario, was the first to notice this, that no one was here. Hey, where's Peach and the other toads? They told us to be in here in the middle of Mushroom Valley. <laughs> My accent's terrible. The green brother, oh. Luigi, <laughs> didn't hear him. He was in a state of shock, as if he'd seen a ghost. 
maybe she was sucked into that. Mario looked up. He saw a gigantic wall made of some kind of dark blue and purple energy. It was about 20 feet high, 40 centimeters wide, and 100 miles long. Mario looked at it in confusion, but they got distracted by something else. Luigi, look, someone or something is coming to us. He was right, for in the wall was a strange silhouette that looked like it was running. Then the mysterious figure finally stepped out of the energy wall. It was something no one in the Mushroom Kingdom had ever seen before. A blue hedgehog with three rows of spikes on his head, green eyes, red high tops, with gold buckles and plain white gloves. The hedgehog walked forward to them, smiling. Hey there, how's it going? The creature asked in a polite but laid back attitude. Before Mario could answer, laid back. <laughs> yeah. He's so cool. <laughs> Before Mario could answer, Luigi got scared and hid behind him. Please, don't eat me. Take Mario, he's a bit juicier than I am. Mario took a deep, annoyed sigh. <sighs> Thanks for the support, bro. Who are you? The Hedgehog put his hand on his hip and chuckled. I'm Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog, and the fastest thing alive. To explain oh. this, he ran around in circles, going faster and faster till he was not much but a blue blur. Soon, Mario and Luigi were ten feet off the ground. Sonic then stopped running, making the tornado of wind disappear. Mario landed safely on his feet, while Luigi, cursed with extremely bad luck, fell face first into the dirt. Hilarious. It took him a while to get his nose unstuck. It's a prat fall. <laughs> The Charlie Day fall. Mm. Wow. This A is fast. End. Mario helped Luigi up on his feet. I'm Mario and this is Luigi. Let me ask you something, Sonic. Did you make this wall? Sonic frowned. No. I was going to ask you the same question. All three of them were thinking about what made the mysterious wall of energy. Their thought bubbles popped when suddenly a huge shadow fell across the whole valley. Hey, who turned off the sunshine? Luigi asked. His question was answered when a giant flying pirate ship run by propellers came into view. Well, what is that? Asked Sonic, pointing at the floating boat. It's one of Bowser's airships, yelled Mario. Sonic got confused. Huh? What's a Bowser? <laughs> no, no. Whoa, what's a Bowser? Wowzers, Bowsers. <laughs> His question was answered when a huge object fell from the airship right in front of him. The dust cloud faded away, revealing a giant green and yellow turtle with red hair, horns, stubby spikes on his shell, and studded bands on his wrist and neck. <sighs> I don't know, I'm going to do the voice. I'm Bowser, he said in a deep, monster-like tone. Bowser, Mario said in shock, but I finally defeated you. I saw you burn in the lava pits. Bowser chuggered. <laughs> There's more than one way to skin King Koopa. Love is not one of them. We'll, we'll beat you again, said Luigi, trying to be brave. Because there's three of us and only one of you. Bowser once again chuckled as Koopas, Goombas, Paragoombas, Paracoopas, and Tribones surrounded the three. All seemed lost until a long snake-like robot dragon came out of nowhere in front of them. Fractail, yelled the boy, two brothers with joy. Quickly, get in the pipe. I hold them what off. The fractail? I don't know. <laughs> they just say fractail. Before the three can answer, a green pipe came out of the ground behind them. Come on, jump in, yelled Mario. Mario jumped in first, then Luigi and Sonic, and the pipe quickly vanished. Mario, Luigi, and Sonic slid down a large slide into some strange underground laboratory of some sort. Sitting on a steel chair was an old man in a lab coat with a large nose, gray hair, and glasses. Why, hello there, Mario brothers and guests, said the old man. Professor Egad, what are you doing here, Mario said in confusion. Egad just lowered his chair and stumbled out of it. Why, this is my lab, of course. Did you think I did my inventions on the road? Sonic gave a confused look. Okay, who the heck is this guy? Mario then put a pan on Egad's back. 
Sonic, this is Professor E. Gad. He helped Luigi get me out of a haunted mansion. Sonic then got his smile back on. Oh, okay. So he's a good guy. Perfect. After long hours of talking, introducing, and invention revealing, Egad then told the explanation of the mysterious wall of energy. The wall is actually connected. Someone actually had the power to combine our world with Sonic's, making it one big planet. Mario and Sonic gave Egad a surprised look, while Luigi just let his jaw drop. So you're saying that both our worlds are combined, and some bad guy did all this? But why? Egad just shrugged and said, must be for some kind of diabolical scheme. And if it's this big, it's not good. Luigi, at the thought of all that, just fainted with Mario giving him an annoyed sigh. Sonic stepped up and said, well, sounds like my kind of mission. I'll take the journey. Mario stepped up too. I'll come too. Luigi didn't want to go. He started to sneak away from it all, but Mario called out, you too, Luigi. Good, with all three of you working together, we can find out what's going on three times as fast. Egad was jumping for joy. Well, we better get going before this gets worse, Sonic announced. They then started to walk out of the lab when Egad called out, Oh, wait, Mario, I got something for you. Mario turned his head. Here, this might come in handy. Egad gave Mario a pair of brown shoes that looked like Sonic's pair. They're a special pair of shoes that allow you to run as fast as Sonic so you don't get left behind. Mario quickly put on the shoes and all three of them zoomed out of the lab. Except for Luigi, who was being carried by Mario and getting a mouthful of dirt. (laughs) At the corner of his eye, Sonic caught a glimpse of a horrifying scene. An orange fox with two tails, half red, half white shoes, light blue eyes, and metal bands around his wrist being attacked by the Hammer Bros. Tails, don't worry. I'll get you out. (laughs) This is adorable. Sonic went into action as he started using his powerful homing attack on the Koopas drawing hammers. Tail breathed in relief. Oh, thanks, Sonic. Those are the craziest turtles I ever met. Sonic gave him a smile and knuckle bumped him. Hey, no problem. Happy to help. Oh, I forgot. These are my new friends, Mario and Luigi. Tails walked up to them. Pleasure to meet you two. Tails shook both of their hands and told them his name. So, where are you guys going anyway? We're going to see who's responsible for the planets combining. <laughs> Luigi informed him. Tails looked excited. Wow, can I join? Sonic spoke up. Well, at this rate, we're going to need those two tails of yours. Sonic and Tails high-fived each other. Soon the four began their journey to figure out the answer to this mysterious <laughs> happening. Meanwhile, at Bowser's castle, Bowser and Kamek were talking about battle strategies. So are the chain chomps on the north side of the Mushroom Kingdom? Yes, Lord. Bowser. All 15 of them. The Buzzy Beetles, too? Absolutely. It's not a battle strategy. (laughs) Yeah, they're just there, hanging out. They're not doing anything, they're just there. The Paragoombas, Piranha Plants, and Fire Bros. Of course, King Koopa. Everything is set for Mario and Sonic's arrival. I don't even know who Sonic is. Bowser put on a confident smile. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> Everything is going according to plan. And we have been true without your help. At the corner stood a silhouetted figure smiling. Smile. Oh, Bowser, you are too kind. Meanwhile, Mario, Sonic, Luigi, and Tails were continuing their journey in a deep jungle covered in vines, moss, and insects. Ooh, ouch, stupid bugs, Luigi complained. Mario looked angry. Luigi, we're on a quest to save the world, and all you can think about are the insects? Well, they're really annoying. Tails was staring at all the plant life with interest. Wow, this place is so beautiful. No wonder Bowser wants it so bad. Sonic then put his hands behind his head. Yeah, it's great. But very weird, too. I mean, what kind of turtle has a dead eye against a plumber anyway? Suddenly, Sonic's air twitched, and he got wide-eyed. Something's <laughs> coming! Hit the deck! <laughs> as soon as they ducked, a huge black ball with sharp teeth named Chain Chomp went right over the heroes' heads. Then all around the four fire bros, Buzzy Beetles, 
piranha plants, paragoombas, and koopa troopas surrounded them, making a huge circle. Mario gave commands. Sonic, Tails, you take the left. Luigi and I will take the right. Mario, Luigi, Sonic, and Tails got to fighting right away. Mario used his big hammer. Luigi had a tanuki suit. Sonic used a spin dash, and Tails attacked with his twin tails. Soon, every enemy was knocked out. All right, we did it. Tails announced and yeah. high fived each other. And then big doom, doom went behind them. A high huge... tail five. <laughs> a huge crocodile with the long, narrow snout, crooked eyes, and was wearing a crown and cape was standing behind him. His name was King. Was this more intruders in my territory? Luigi's jaw dropped. We're doomed. King K. Rule was just about to stomp on them, but then a brown fist came out of nowhere and hit him into submission. Ouch, he said as his lead and landed on a rock. Then a giant ape with brown hair wearing a red tie with the initials DK <laughs> did a pose in front of Rule. <laughs> Donkey Kong, Mario shouted. What are you doing here? Donkey Kong moved his finger at them and ran off. What is he not doing there? <laughs> <laughs> I guess he lives there. He's, I guess they're in his jungle. I don't know. Sonic <laughs> suggested, I think he wants us to follow him. Meanwhile, inside Bowser's castle, <laughs> the King of Koopas was talking with this mysterious figure in a big metal room. Well, plan A failed, so let's go to plan B, the figure said. Are you sure this is going to work? Bowser stared and grinned. Trust me, I know this will work. Bowser pressed the blue button. The dock floor opened up and a huge silhouetted giant arose from the hangar. The man smiled a wicked smile. Okay, plan B is ready for launch. Donkey Kong led the floor to the edge of the jungle at a huge city lined with skyscrapers. All right, station square. <laughs> they waved goodbye to DK and walked into the city. Damn. DK was just a cameo, I guess. <laughs> okay, um, um, I have notes. Um, one, uh, you're you're good on the voices. You're good on the voices. That was that was probably your um your best effort there. <laughs> um. I'm just goofing on. Uh, yeah, no. Um, you tried. You tried. Very little could have saved that. Very little. But you tried, and kudos to you. I'm like, half like here's... you want to you want to read the other half? <laughs> um... Yeah, I'll send it to you. No, no, no. You can. You can read it, and um, after this, um, yeah, yeah, no, finish this, and um, I have uh, one that is a uh, Flappy Bird crossover. With Mario? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Mario looked at the city left to right very quickly. Wow, Sonic, this place is ginormous. What can I say? It's pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> and a black streak zoomed past Sonic, left to right. Finally, Sonic did a big kick, crossed his legs with a black hedgehog with red and black rocket shoes, red stripes on his quills, arms, and legs, and gold rings on his wrists and ankles. Whoa, Shadow, chill out. <laughs> Shadow put his leg down. Sorry. I thought you were the faker I was chasing around all day. Sonic was <laughs> interested in what Shadow said. Wait. What? A faker? Suddenly a blue robot with red eyes came out from the sky. The robot's name was Metal Sonic. Target acquired. Sonic and Shadow. Insights. Metal shot a laser from his arm at the two hedgehogs. Using both their speeds, Sonic and Shadow dodged every shot with ease. I got this, Sonic said as he used his homing attack on Metal. Only blocked the attack with an energy field. Chaos Spear! He yelled Shadow when he shot an arrow of yellow energy as Meadow. Again, Meadow used an energy shield. 
of no use. My design is flawless. Sonic Mario not, Luigi Tales and Shadow. He's not metal Sonic. Sonic. He's just metal. He's too hardcore, man. Sonic Mario Luigi Tales and Shadow started running up a tall tower. Well, Mario and Luigi used the cape feather and flew up. With Metal Sonic chasing them, Metal blasted like a firework, shooting lasers left to right. It's no rent to run, heroes. They were at a at the top of the skyscraper. Metal was in the air with and was charging his powerful move. His chest laser. This gave Shadow enough time to shoot a chaos spear at Metal. It got lodged in his chest, and sparks started flying. No, this can't be. I'm the ultimate life form. Metal Sonic then exploded. <laughs> just boom. <gasps> Metal's straight head up, landed. Straight up. Just it exploded. <laughs> Metal's head landed in front of the five heroes. And then Shadow put his foot on Metal's head and crushed it. Shadow looked upon the reins. No. I am. The five then walked out of Station Square and in, into the Mushroom Kingdom City Market, where toads were buying groceries from every corner. I don't get it. How did Bowser get his hands on Metal Sonic? Mario made a suggestion. Maybe someone's helping him. Everyone looked at each other, but only one person knows how to make a Sonic robot. That man is. Shadow was stopped. A huge shadow spread across the market. Toads were running in terror and hiding behind the stands up in the sky. Thousands of airships hey, with high tech weaponry and had Bowser's insignia on them. Ah! Luigi screamed, the loudest he ever did. Mario's Sonic Tails and Shadows were stunned by the mass numbers of them and ran to the castle, leaving Luigi behind. Shadow then yelled, What are we doing? Where are we going? Mario gave him a smile. We need to ride up there, don't we? Mario opened the hangar door, and inside was a yellow biplane equipped with machine guns. He had designed this plane for air battles. Now it comes in handy. I don't remember that. <laughs> but of course. Soon a door opened on the castle roof, and the plane took off the ships. So... Which ship should we enter first? Sonic said jokingly. When the ship started firing at the yellow biplane, one bullet took out the right wing and it started smoking. Oh no! We need a place to land. Over there, Shadow pointed to an airship, five times bigger than the others. The four landed on the hangar and got off, only to see an army of armored Koopas with bombs. A gigantic war got underway. Mario used a steel hat that covered his body with metal. It charged at the Koopa army. Sonic ran around in a tornado, sending Koopa soldiers into the air. Shadow used chaos Aww. control and teleported left to right, knocking out lots of Koopas into submission. Tails brought out a portable pop gun that shot five orbs of energy a shot. Even though they fought hard, they were suddenly outnumbered by Koopa soldiers. One shot a net gun, and then energy nets caught the four heroes under them. The platform lord and Bowser appealed on the evil smile. Tiss, tiss, tiss. It's sad to see heroes fall like this. Mario got real mad. It's all claps. Real mad. <laughs> Alright, Bowser. Tell us who you're working for. He's not working with anybody. A familiar voice shot out from the balcony. The figure stepped into the light which revealed a man with glasses, a red jacket with yellow cuffs, white gloves, an orange mustache, and an evil grin. Dr. Eggman? Whoa. Meanwhile, down on the ground, Luigi's getting worried. What do I do? What do I do? Mario can be killed up there. Suddenly, a red robot dragon came in front of Luigi with Professor E. Gad on his back. Hop on, Luigi. They need backup. Sonic was outraged by the surprise. So you were the one that combined the planets and gave mass weaponry to Bowser. Why? <laughs> Eggman started to explain. <laughs> it's quite simple, really. Further research told me that the Chaos Emeralds not only hold a great amount of power, but when used right can allow the user to travel to other worlds. I traveled to Mario's world to make a deal to Bowser. We started making plans for your arrival, and also a little gift for both of you. Behold! 
The wall behind Eggman slowly opened, revealing a giant robot that looks like Bowser, except those red and gold. The arms had blaster cannons attached to them and a flamethrower in the mouth. Sonic and Mario looked at it in horror. Beautiful, isn't it? I call it the Egg Koopa. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Bowser and Eggman got inside the Egg Koopa and got ready to blast off. Eggman um, waved at them. Sayonara. Uh, it's actually probably accurate to what would be in the game, so it's stupid but believable. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying it. It's just so goofy. <laughs> 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 like, if they made a game with these two, it, it was, would probably happen. Yeah, that wasn't the Olympics. <laughs> Sayonara, Sonic. And goodbye, Mario. The Egg Koopa activated its rocket feet and flew away from the airship. Mario put his head up. Sonic, we gotta get out of this net. Sonic tried to cut the net. Yeah, but how? Suddenly, they hear a roar from outside. Fractail came bursting in, fighting the surges with a slam of his tail. I still don't know what this Fractail thing is. <laughs> Luigi looked happy. Mario, Sonic, Tail, Shadow, you all okay? Mario tried to smile. Yep, yeah, thanks for the rescue, bro. Egad came from behind. Hey, I helped too. Luigi and Egad got the energy net off the four heroes and threw it over the ship. Mario, is that you? A woman in a pink dress wearing a gold crown and blonde hair <laughs> yelled from a prison cell. <laughs> Peach, don't worry. I'll get you out of there. Mario swung his giant hammer at the cell bars, breaking them into bits. Thanks, Mario. Bowser and Eggman kidnapped me and tried to sell me for ransom. Say to who? <laughs> the president? <laughs> Four ninety nine on eBay. Wow. She's so brave. Mario looks surprised. Wow, that's even low for Bowser. But while their backs were turned, I snagged these. Peach dropped the seven Chaos Emeralds on the floor at Mario's feet. Wow. How convenient. What are those? Rainbow Diamonds? Sonic grabbed them from the floor. They're called Chaos Emeralds. They're very powerful. Without warning, the emeralds started spinning around Mario and Sonic. Light started bursting from the two, and soon the light faded. Mario now had a yellow cape. His shirt was gold, along with his hat and shoes, and his overalls were snow white. Sonic was now gold with red eyes. His quills were bent upright like shadows. They were called Super Mario and Super Sonic. Huh? Sonic, what oh. happened? <laughs> the Chaos Emeralds, that's what happened. Sonic and Mario shot up like rockets into the skies and zoomed off to destroy the Egg Koopa. Meanwhile, the Egg Koopa was flying left and right, trying not to hit their own feet, fleet. So even with all this weaponry and all the Egg Koopa, we're still aren't powerful enough. How's that so, Eggman? Bowser roared in the man. Eggman became annoyed. Because, Bowser, we need one more thing to complete the plan of Double World Conquest. Bowser went down for it. Yes, what is it? <laughs> Eggman put on a grin. There, on Angel Island. Eggman was pointing to an island floating in the sky. On the island was an altar with a giant green diamond-shaped emerald that was glowing with power and was the size of a minivan. This emerald was called the Master <laughs> Emerald. Fucking... <laughs> I'm sorry. We need the Master Emerald to fully power the Egg Cooper. After that, we'll be unstoppable. Suddenly, a huge piece of the airship hit the back of the Egg Koopa. The Egg Koopa turned around to see Super Mario and Super Sonic floating in front of them. Bowser and Eggman looked shocked. What, Bowser? I thought you told you to bring the Chaos Emeralds. You did. Peach must have took them from me when my back was turned. Well, no matter. Even with their super forms, they cannot defeat us and the Egg Koopa. The Egg Koopa roared a dinosaur-like roar. It oh! had red bills on the right arm and a powerful laser on the left. No matter what, the Egg Koopa threw at them. Super Mario and Super Sonic dodged them all with ease. 
<laughs> Mario, I'll take left. You take right, Sonic yelled over the f fire from the Egg Koopa. Super Mario brought out his trusty hammer to destroy the robot, but no matter how hard Mario swung, the Egg Koopa didn't even have a dent. Super Sonic tried his super homing attack, but that failed too. Every punch, projectile, kick, or weapon they used, the Egg Koopa still stood standing. Eggman laughed. Ho 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 ho, face it, Sonic. You're not even with your powers combined can beat us. There's gotta be some blueprints somewhere. Tails, Luigi, and Egad were looking for a clue on how to defeat the Egg Koopa. Then Luigi tripped it's on a power wrench. friendship. Yes, needy Captain Planet, and landed on a pile of blue paper. Tails turned around and looked at the papers. All right, great job, Luigi. You found them. Oh, thanks, Tails. Meanwhile, Super Mario and Sonic landed on the nearest Bowser airship. They got up slowly, just as the Egg Koopa came before them. This is too easy. Before the Egg Koopa could slam them into oblivion, Tails and his X-Tornado 1, a red biplane with the name Sonic across in yellow, appeared and shouted, Sonic! Mario! It's the chest power core! And it's its weak point! Super Sonic looked up and saw a huge red crystal on its chest, bursting with energy every second. Alright, now. We were to hit it. The two heroes then got to work. Super Mario slammed his hammer on it while Super Sonic hit it with the homing attack. After at least 12 hits, the energy core started to crack and shatter. The Egg Koopa started to shake and tremble. Wow, it's in the big glowy spot. Who would have thought? No! No, this can't be! Our plan was flawless. What happens now? Suddenly flawless. the Egg Koopa exploded into a million pieces while Eggman and Bowser shot up into space like rockets. Soon, the two heroes blew up the other ships, leaving them to rubble. Tails landed his tornado on the ground right next to Mario and Sonic, who were reverting back to their normal forms. Everyone high-fived each other in pride. Well, Mario, you fought good out there. More of a hero than I thought? Thanks, Sonic. You too, Mario said to Sonic as they knuckle-bumped each other. Later, Princess Peach, the Toads, and everyone else were celebrating the defeat of both Bowser and Eggman. Donkey Kong made a banana cream pie. Egad brought over a mobile light show, and Tails made chili dogs, which, of course, Sonic had to have one. Sonic took a bite out of his chili dog. Well, I have to say, without the turtles, walking mushrooms, and Bowser, this place is pretty neat. Not Mario smiled. Thanks, but I want you to know what your place looks like. <laughs> There's our ride, said Tails, pointing to a portal that led them to Green Hill Zone. Mario and Sonic looked at each other. Race you to the portal! <laughs> You're on! Yelled Mario as both of them ran to the portal at the blink of an eye. Meanwhile in space, Eggman and Bowser were arguing about their defeat. <laughs> I still can't believe... You forgot got the Chaos Emeralds, you stupid turtle. Hey, you were the one who wouldn't give me the time to get them baldy McNose hair. Eggman's face turned red. Hey, that's offensive. No. How's it look to the planet? Can we just stop butting heads together and find a way back down? Just then a meteor appeared and knocked them <laughs> down into the planet's gravitational pool. They <laughs> the trees. Land Science in the jungle below. Man, where are we? And out of nowhere, Donkey Kong appeared and put on a really angry mood. Eggman trampled, <laughs> trembled. Nice what? monkey. Gulp. And Donkey Kong knocked them back into space. The end. Oh, wow. Um, well, so that was. That was definitely written by a child, and that was <laughs> wish fulfillment at its finest. And um, mini size Van Emeralds. Um, that is a real thing, but damn, if uh, if that's not one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. <laughs> the size <laughs> of a mini van, specifically well, a mini van. 
Well, they do say write what you know. So I'm assuming the author has either been in a minivan or possibly knows someone with a minivan. Probably his mom. Most likely his mom. And last but not least, we got Maddie's original creation. Let's hear it. What, yes, what's the name was, of it? It's called Save the Hell Valley Sky Trees. Mm, all right, let's go. I am the watcher. Ponder the question, what if Wakanda met Mario in a moment equal parts selfishness and selflessness Wong and Dr. Fate, uh, sorry, Dr. Strange, by using a special spell called the Incantation of Mass Distraction, made everyone forget this horrible game's existence. Never was there a worse doctor to deliver the news. Time to beings not linear is precious. During the blip, a set of the most talented programmers, artists, and creators of the era had dedicated themselves to the one group with funding, Wakanda. And as a strange moment would have it, the Earth of 494 would collide with that of the movie canon. Mm -hmm. Moment five. Shuri knows it. Nothing is destined to happen. Destiny is just an equation. Stephen Strange was a great many things, but he was not a liar for convenience sake. Surrounded by machinery and equipment of all kinds, she shouted, What is the confidence rate? 38% chance of effectiveness, rattled off the AI. Wakanda's best and brightest surrounded her. Even with the seed and the 3D printed flower, it might not be enough. She knew that it may just not even exist, that it may all be delusion. It could be an immortal life form impersonating Bast. But she knew that there were things that were true beyond magic, that there was simply science by another name. Griot, she said, staring up at the AI, staring up at uh, an infinite, uncaring universe only to hear something different, something a version of her had never heard. His heart rate is increasing. Griot, she yelled. The herb treatment is taken, it announced. Barring any unforeseen complications or outside infections, he will recover. More calculations are needed in. Her mother, the queen, was at her bedside. She had been there. Seemingly for days. And she heard the words that had never been uttered from another room. He's breathing again. She called up a screen and saw that one of Chala's eyes had eased open. She doesn't even remember running in. She embraced him. That was right where she needed to be. Moment four. Chala was awake. On the surface, he appeared completely healthy, if deeply fatigued. She stared at her brother in a hospital bed in the corner. Metallic machinery gleaming and shifting like sand around him. Ten to eleven years, she said. I failed. No, I have to keep going. It was for the first time he spoke to her in that tone. Time. More time is a gift. It's enough. Sherry would keep going and trying. She went over to him and embraced him awkwardly. 
There was an emergency snowbed ready within the floor, just in case. The Jabari technology advancements in medicine were slowly making their way over. I'd been to the ancestral plane, Shuri. I was there. Believe me. But believe what you want. Just don't let losing me... He paused. He had seen where all of it would go. He had seen the world without her. He had seen it countless times, again and again. Shuri, you didn't fail. Every time you rule something out, you save time. That's a path no one will waste. That's a step towards a cure for someone else. And one day there'll be another person. Another person like me, who isn't me. Who lives. That's research. It's never wasted. His breathing was less labored. I've had trouble. I have these memories. He paused. The death of his uncle had left a complex legacy. And honestly, he was just clinging to the hope of more time. To the fact of it. He loved the ancestral plane, but he didn't want to go back to an eternity of arguing under roaring skies and rolling arroyas with his family. That's when she looked in his hands. He wanted to escape. Go somewhere deep, far away. Something comforting, but outside himself. Remember when Baba brought these home? He lifted up a clear purple Game Boy and handheld GameCube 64 in an atomic purple. I heard what you did at the uh, a Wakandan Outreach Center in Kampala and Oakland then everywhere when I first came back. Nakia had brought it to her attention, but she had been the one to organize it. The championships, the races, the games. Even though he was weak, it was more like he was young and gentle. Then suddenly, he was gripping the devices tightly. There was an adaptive controller in it near his hands, but he didn't bother using it. Do you want to lose? He said with a smile. Like old times. They were always competitive. T'Challa had been good. The leaderboard often flashed with his name T'Cha-Cha. And a familiar music played. I know why you love this. So many great times playing together, she said. I know, but even knowing they had more time, it almost didn't feel right. <laughs> she looked over at the wall, lined with cards, including one that had a Mario in a lab coat with a plastered on smile and get well coming from a thought bubble. Come on, let's play. Lose to me. Like old times. My favorite part of Mario Kart that's a metaphor for life. You can be leading, but roadblocks and circumstances can change. Anything is possible. Even a blue shell. A meteor. A man with gemstone in his hands can knock you off your path. But then sometimes you can bounce back. It's complete chaos and nothing makes sense. But there's a road ahead. There is somewhere for you to go. He turned on the screen and his koye beads projected onto the wall. Vibranium gave way to pixelated colors. He, they'd played it on an American style television once on a small screen. But that was too much effort now. And suddenly, the, his character was on screen holding up a shell with a voice in a chip tune saying, Let's go! She barely remembers it, even after it's done. All the tracks merge into one continuously rainbow road, heading to a parody of Las Vegas with La Luigi dancing in a hula skirt above them.
His strategy was to drift and offensively shield himself with mushrooms swirling around him. At the starting line, there were full AI characters. Meowser, a cat Bowser, riding a helicarrier. Drybones, that skeletal turtle, riding a 1940s motorcycle. The Hulk edition toad that would occasionally break up the track. Even a vibranium version of Mario with kinetic energy that other cars bounced off of. They were coming around a bend. And she moved the controller and it was like nothing else mattered. They were the only two people in the world in a simpler time racing together. I barely moved. Hit me. The pixelated cars moved. Wakanda had led off their technology in safe ways. Vibranium-inspired uh, screens. Of course not made of vibranium had been one of them. You zap me, he said accusingly. His smile was wider. So was hers. He hit the finish line. I let you win. Her everyday life had been so characterized by clandestine invasions by the possibility of grieving her brother again by all the loss by the blip of everything and she thought in that moment there had to be a way to break this cycle before that she had actually played games with the world to remember him and all his people she had tested the remote piloting technology with mario kart first back when he had been there both as a lonely genius and a true collaborator, learning and earning the trust of those around her. They built up projects for the betterment of Wakanda, ones visible and ones that did not see the light of day. And for the first time, after so many people vanished, Wakanda opened up to the gaming world. They opened up their centers. They opened up the internet, simply to play. The outreach center was a lifeline, and it turned, in some cases, into a lounge. Technology was gifted everywhere, and a strange thing happened. People began to love Wakanda. All ages came. There were their haters, of course, but it seemed Wakanda was never more popular. They raced. They mourned, they celebrated the transition, and they moved on, neither shortchanging nor diminishing his legacy. She knew it was always going to be a challenge, and then suddenly, he was there again. And she believes now, as she's going down that track, she believes in ancestors, even if she doesn't always believe fast is a little more than a celestial being that gave him the great gift of vibranium. And maybe it's naive that she has a belief that no matter how cold the world could be, it's her job to improve it and not just profit from it or ignore it. That those who came before her and that those who will come after have a choice built in simply by living. And she stares over at that stupid get well card and thinks, maybe. The Video Game Society of the Wakanda Outreach Center had inspired many. They'd even likened it to many, the fire flower, to the heart-shaped flower that once graced the gardens. Shuri Science and Information Outreach Center, uh, hadn't had that originally. Nokia didn't do video games, but had endorsed anything the locals loved. He paused the game for a second. I have to say, thank you for getting them to add the Panther power up, he said. I know it's stupid, but I, I do like it. It wasn't a flower. They didn't want to have national secrets spilling out through a game. Rather, a silvery vibranium mushroom. Except when you had the power-up, 
a dark-skinned, black-eyed, uh, eared toad, wrote a parody of Alexis like a surfboard. Or a vibranium-colored character did. Security cameras uh, had played th that car shenanigan on the news often. And she had to wonder, staring at that colored world across the screen, dreams within dreams. She had to wonder if it was possible. There had to be more ancestral planes. There had to be more roads. There had to be a way to connect with other ancestral planes. The universe had to be infinite. And there had to be something else out there. And the watcher's voice came. And this is how we got to this moment that the heart of the explorer began to beat. It would open up to the possibilities of the emergency verse itself. And in an instant she shouted, Who's there? Whoa, that was very unique. <laughs> very unique. <laughs> definitely had a lot of imagination with this one. I and mean, someone definitely watched Wakanda Forever before writing this. I did. With audio narration. I wanted to write the funniest, stupidest, yet with a bit of heartwarming and a bit of a message. Because fan fiction seems to hit all those highs and all those lows. And, um, yeah, I don't care if I did it right. I don't care if I did it wrong. This weird little thing exists now. And... I laughed my ass off doing this. But also, um, it it kind of felt good because I watched that movie and the entire time I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It is a beautiful movie, but I just thought, God, it just like... These characters wouldn't have gotten a chance to s shine if someone else died. And I'm like, okay, how can I treat... This person's death was still some dignity and actually do something nice. So that is my very lame attempt at that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And also, I'm tired of people like all they seem to do in fan fiction. I mean, there's some good stuff there. I, I, I read a couple of things. There is some good stuff there. But a lot of it just seems to be how can we make these characters suffer? And I'm like, eh, maybe not. Because so much of fiction is like, how can we make these characters suffer? How can we make this conflict, this and that and this and that? And I'm like, frankly, I'm just getting a little bored of all this. I feel you. I feel you. Well, this has been a very long episode. Thank you for your contribution. And thank all of you guys for listening. Check us out next time. We're going to have that Mario Brothers movie review. Go out and watch it and then come back and we'll discuss it. And that's it. Take care. Yes. Thanks again to Matt. Adios. And thank you for indulging my brief insanity because I'll be honest, I was panicking. I had no idea what to do for this. <laughs> it's all good. That's how fan fiction works. We just exactly. Go with the flow. <laughs> Later, y'all. You know,